I'm, I'm curious, what, what would you think of so, somebody like Andrew's message? So, you know, when Andrew came up uh, maybe a year ago, started seeing a lot of this stuff pop up. And, you know, I've had a lot of controversial guests on my yeah. show. And so, and a lot of male energy on my show. Mm-hmm. You could argue my show is just my search for a male role model. <laughs> if you really want to mm-hmm. analyze me, which yeah. maybe you have. And so I've had people like Dan Pena on the show, which is kind of a, he's a 75-year-old version of Andrew. Um, <laughs> and he comes on and he doesn't pull any punches He's like your grandfather. He just tells it like it is. He tells you you're weak. He tells you to step up and he tells you to keep going. And he's very controversial. But when I bump into people on the streets, they all ask me about him because the men, men, the women deep down inside know that he's the only one that's telling them the truth. And the truth, I believe, Sadia, is the rarest commodity these days because Mm -hmm. no one will tell you the truth because they all have an agenda Mm -hmm. somewhere. And so they'll lie to you to get you to do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. And so when someone gives it to you straight, you know it deep down inside. And so they they flock to someone like Pena, where on the outside, anybody politically correct is, um, you know, they're shocked by what he says. (laughs) But deep down, he has a massive following. So when I saw Andrew come up, I thought, he's fulfilling a need that men want. And Mm -hmm. men need someone to guide them, need someone to tell them the truth and tell Mm -hmm. them to step up. And there's a dearth of that out there where they're trying to feminize men and the toxic masculinity. So for me, the rise of Andrew was a sign that this need wasn't being met and that we were creating a a type of male that was really lacking this in their life. Mm -hmm. You might argue that the election of Trump was another signal that people were sick and tired of this narrative that was being promoted maybe by the coasts of America Mm -hmm. and that deep down inside your traditional person and you come from traditional values Mm -hmm. was saying, no, we're not having all this nonsense (laughs) that we read about in the New York Times. We actually value what traditionally is core values and traditional beliefs and we want that back. So I saw Andrew as that rise. Now look, Anybody who cuts through media be- to become the most Google man on the planet, as he says, which I think he's right, um, has to use other techniques. Yeah. And to use that, it's the fast cars, yes. and it's the lifestyle, and it's the edgy content that which, pushes the envelope. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, yeah. which, but from knowing Andrew, I know that's not actually what he's right. like, but it works yeah. well on so so Yeah, yeah. And, and so I've watched a lot of content on Andrew. I'm a, I'm a fan. And, he's uh, great. He, and a great yeah. speaker as well. Yeah, yeah fantastic. he's a great communicator. Great. And again, I've, I've had so many guests over the years, mm-hmm. I, can, I can realize that the message isn't enough. You mm-hmm. need the messenger. Right. And he's a great communicator, uh, communicator and it's congruent with him on many levels. Yes. And so that's important. Mm-hmm. So, um, but, but you need the flash, you need the sizzle to get the people to put the stake in. Mm-hmm. And so um, I agree, people are like, oh, he's not like that, but he can actually turn up the dial on you. He, yeah. he can turn it up to 11 on Andrew. It, yeah. And he can become that guy really quickly and he could say, well, they took it out of context. <laughs> but like, that's his alter ego. Yeah. And he can turn it up and that gets attention. And we're in an attention economy. Yeah. And so that is part him. And that's why everybody saw him initially. Yeah. As you can as you consume more of Andrew, you start to realize that there are some really, I think, positive male values. And important there. ones. And important ones. Impor- and one thing I have to say that what he highlighted um, is the importance of fearlessness. And we we as human beings need fearless men. The reason being it's an evolved trait. Like it, when we used to live in hunter gatherer times, if the, if everybody was so fearful, we would never go out and hunt and get food. We needed fearless men that would say, I don't care that it's dark, let me quickly, I think I heard something, let me go hunt it. Now women, what's happening is we're creating fearful men because they're terrified to even, you know, approach a woman in the gym in case she films it and puts it on TikTok, or we're terrified to even compliment a woman in case she kind of gets you arrested. So what's happening is we're creating fearful men, but the reality is when a woman is with a man who's fearful of her, she feels like she has a power over him. And when she feels like she has more power than him, she doesn't feel safe. So we actually need a fearless man. And when we say fearless, it doesn't just mean he says what he wants. He has a willingness to walk away. He actually lets go of a woman if she's being um, too difficult. But the problem is we've created a society of men who tiptoe around women. And as a result, she no longer feel safe and when women don't feel safe they end up either hopping they lose their identity they don't they, they're becoming masculine they're becoming feminine they don't know what they do so they get a bit lost in the process so I think what he's highlighted is that people are attracted to fearlessness and it's something that we need to bring back and it's what's so funny is like you were saying with your guest Dan um, probably what he said a hundred years ago wouldn't be seen as fearless but now we've made what's normal and what's just an opinion we're, we're terrified to say it because again the modification is if you say something that offends the softest people in society you might get cancer 
cancelled. And so we're catering to the weakest members of society and tiptoeing around them. And as a result, we're silencing everybody and, ha- and their opinions, sadly. Which is why your platform is so fantastic, because you actually give voices to people who have that kind of uh, laissez-faire attitude towards social media and towards you know what the politically correct thing to say is. And people really want to hear this stuff. That's the crazy thing. And you must really want it because you invite those kind of... Yeah. yeah. I also like to be challenged a little bit. And yeah. I like to try to entertain ideas that I don't agree with because mm-hmm. it's a try. It's healthy. And was there anything in Andrew that you disagreed with? Well, on the whole, did you understand his message? You know, look, Andrew put himself out there and he wanted to, I guess, get a huge following worldwide. And so mm-hmm. to do that, he did a lot of media. Mm-hmm. And in doing so, he talked about the where various things that he did from a business perspective and i yeah. think over the years he probably did things that he maybe wish he hadn't yes now when you gotta make money as a man then like i you know i respect a man's hustle mm-hmm. but in doing so i think he backed himself into situations and made yeah. some enemies that maybe he's paying for now now i don't i i i don't i think he's being unfairly prosecuted for those yeah. things but because i think he was so open about those things they had a lot of ammunition for him that's true Um, And look, sometimes he just takes it up to 11. And Mm -hmm. so you could say, okay, some of those things are slightly offensive, but to the core, and he he can be a little bit of a chameleon too, Mm -hmm. like all great communicators. (laughs) You know, Gandhi did that and Obama did that. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, he's great. I think he's a net, net maximum positive. And um, if you really spend time listening to the long form message, Mm -hmm. there's great things there. And the character is great. Just to see the way he handled himself when he was incarcerated and the way oh, he Oh yeah, with a lot himself. of dignity. A lot of dignity and the way he's constantly, you know, uh, praising the Romanian officials. And just, mm-hmm. it's nice to see someone taking the higher route there. Yeah. Um, and there's a, but there's a lot of forces against him here. And, you know, you know, did he have to call out Greta on the Twitter feed? I mean, that's the side of Andrew mm-hmm. that makes him so famous. Yeah. It's, it's whether he did that tweet or not, I don't yeah. know, but it's where the ego just gets a little out of control. Yeah. And that's 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 the line we all walk as human beings. Uh, yeah. But if he didn't do that, sometimes we wouldn't know who he is. And and I think that when somebody's made a concerted effort to change something that they did many years ago that they didn't like, if they're making an effort to you know say that okay maybe I still don't agree with that kind of industry anymore and I wouldn't have done it in this day and age, I don't think we should kind of punish people on their worst sins, especially if they've made an effort to change it. But it is a, a great ammunition for the people that want to hold hold it against him. So unfortunately it just comes with the price when you live a very colorful life people can pick on lots yeah and now he's got a high profile and you know we live in in in, in I, I realized in 2020 with our episodes with ike and all the censoring that we got i mean this literally is an information war mm-hmm. I mean, we're talking about how the way that we digitally communicate with each other and the way we digitally reward men and women we'll get into men shortly but um you know it's an information war, so people are like, ah, oh, they can't be trying to cancel Andrew because of what he says. But right now, it really is about promoting an ideology and putting ideas in people's minds yeah. in any way, shape, or form. And that, those are the front lines. Yeah. War doesn't happen anymore on the battlefield. It doesn't happen with nuclear mass- missiles. It happens right in your bedroom with your kid's iPad. Yeah. And so this is real, and it's going to define our future. Mm-hmm. Um, our digital media will. And so I can see why he's right at the cut of it. And that's why everybody goes to visit Andrew in Romania. Yeah. I mean, how do you get Candace Owens and Tucker Carlson and Patrick McDavid yeah. to go to Bucharest? <laughs> they couldn't even spell Bucharest. Yeah. But they do it because they understand that Andrew is at the front line of this you war. You would be a great interviewer. You should definitely, yeah. I'll yeah. definitely reach out yeah. to him. I'd like to sit down with Yeah, him you'd sure. be great at that. So yeah. so, yeah, I think it's a net positive and it's a fascinating character study for me. But again, mm. it shows me... For me, he's a symptom of a bigger problem, which is men and maybe women Mm -hmm. looking for the essence of what it is to be a man. And everybody needs that. And I agree with you. Um, Let's talk about what's going on with men. Mm -hmm. Because maybe some of these men are following Andrew. But if narcissism is the result of what we're doing to to women with our digital media and online, what's happening to our men? Weakness. Weakness. They are so afraid brave and of responsibility they are so terrified of make of self-control 
and they have no desire to solve problems. So the, it, it creates a very, very weak man. And what I mean by this is there are men that will essentially use their 20s as an extended adolescence. Back in the day, what men would do is use their 20s as a training ground for their future. So they would get their education or go to wars, they would create a home, they would have their children, and that would be their focus for the rest of their life. Now I have to feed my family. I've created the groundwork and now I know where I'm going for the next 30 years. I'm going to make sure my kids go to school, my wife is fed and this, that and the other. And that, the 20s would be that period. What we've done is taken the 20s of, of men and replaced responsibility with hedonism. So men are now told that 25 is way too young to have kids. And even part of me, when I see a man that's 25 and married, I'm like, well, how did that, like what went wrong? And it's because what we've done is we've created 20s as an extended adolescence. We've accepted that a 25 year old man will have no different of lifestyle than a 19 year old man, because essentially he'll still be going out on the weekend, he'll still be having short term mating strategies with sleeping with girls without even taking them on dates or without even considering marriage and kids. And we've convinced them that marriage is terrible. We've convinced men that you, you know, you just go on a bunch of holidays, just go and spend money, get in debt if you have to, move out from your parents as long as you've got your own place and even if you are struggling to pay rent that's better just waste your money waste your efforts just waste 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 nothing is about investing into their future unless it's money they don't think about how do I take care of people now men back in the day their primary focus was how do I provide and protect the people around me particularly women around me the man, the average man, the young man is not even thinking about providing and protecting. He's just thinking about enjoying and, you know, avoiding responsibility. And I think the avoidance of responsibility limits a man's ability to become masculine. You will never be masculine until you have to provide for people. You'll never be masculine until you have to protect people. And what we've done is created a man who's afraid of those things. So unfortunately, I think we're, uh, the main problem with men is weakness. And they allow women to walk all over them. They allow that a lot more than they would previously. I get that the culture is very terrified of women, but they, they tiptoe around it. They're scared to say an opinion. They're, they're so fearful and weak that women are no longer attracted to them. And they are, because they're not getting that attraction from women, they stick to pornography or escorts or using prostitution because they essentially recognize that they're not a man that women would be attracted to. Wow. All right. And the women like having that temporary power. So sometimes they're just like, I like this and because everybody wants more power. So yeah. the, again, the short term focused, it feels good to have some power over a man. But in the long term, you're breeding someone that you that is not going to protect your village, is not going to protect you, is mm. not going to be the father of the children you want. Yeah, it's, it's so different to how we all like junk food. In the short term, it tastes great. But afterwards, you feel shit and you know your body will pay the price. Similarly, when you take a weak man, for the first, uh, for the first moments, you feel like you're on a power trip, and you feel loved actually that he caves into you, and you feel as a woman that he must really love me because he just listens to everything I say and he concedes to everything. So you start to have an inflated ego, and you think this is great, this feels like love. He really loves me because he gives into everything. Over time, you're pushing more and more because you're looking, you're looking for the boundary. We all are as human beings, we look for our boundaries. So she ends up pushing him more and more to the point where she starts to hate him because she doesn't feel safe around him and she can't see the stop sign and we need stop signs as human beings we need it at work we need it in the law we need it in our relationships so what happens is that kind of ego boost turns into uh, contempt she starts to have resentment and contempt towards this man for being unable to make her feel safe and protected so unfortunately that weak man that initially you're thinking is great because he ad agrees with all your, your ideologies is later going to be the bone of contention and you're actually going to go out and seek a man who's more toxic and more difficult and actually more Punish, uh, who's punishing you because you've been craving boundaries. We all crave them, unfortunately. It's fascinating. We all yeah. search for boundaries. In and all isn't of it fascinating as a woman myself, but <laughs> what we say and what we want are not in line, unfortunately. We say we want them to accept our influence, but in the long run, we need to just trust their judgment. So we actually just want a man who trusts his own judgment and we can let him lead us. And we know that he's not going to lead us up a cliff. Whereas when he's too soft and too weak, we don't, he's like an extra child for us.
Right. And we have to raise him and we don't And the like men are the same way because we thought in the short term we want the super exciting, mm-hmm. you know, carnal woman that's yeah. out there. But in the long run, then we know that's just a nightmare. Yeah. And that she probably comes from something challenging and yeah. traumatizing, Traum- which we'll get to. <laughs> but we don't really want that no. in the long run. In okay. the short run, it's great, though, for men. They love that vixen kind of woman that keeps him on the, his turns because it's a challenge. And it's a way of, like, if I can get her to submit, I've really achieved something. I've conquered something. And it makes it's great for the male ego compared to a woman who's naturally very easy to conquer. Uh, to conquer. But in the long run, it's soul-destroying. Because okay. you can't actually get her to, you, you might fall in love with that woman that you actually can't secure. And it actually is very soul destroying for their ego. So we're very complex as human beings. We love, we, it's like we're masochists. We love causing ourselves trauma. Isn't it terrible? <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> I, I want to get into the relationships, but let's cover porn while we're here. Yeah. So porn um, and the accessibility of porn yeah. these days, and I guess in a whole variety of that is, is through the roof. I mean, my boys are six and seven, and I'm trying to convince myself that they're going to see this sooner than later, yeah. if not already. Oh, I, I hope not. God forbid. But yeah. um, tell me about how that affects that male. If they're already weak or being promoted to be weak, then how does this play out for men? Because it's different than women. Yeah. Uh, the average age of porn consumption is around 10, 